question was already asked in the early um, that about quality of the predictions. Basically, we want to know how much confidence can we have for the predicted models? And if for a big structure, like which part can we trust? To answer those questions, I will first talk about the confidence matters for a computed structure model. Then I'll talk about its applications, especially at rcsp.org. And I will briefly talk about the comparison between the CSM confidence and PDB structure confidence, and finally give a summary of what to trust or not in the CSM. So why did AlphaFold 2 become so popular in the past two years? It was actually because there are high accuracy or high confidence. On the right side is the comparison of different algorithms for CASP 14, a blind contest for prediction algorithms. As you can see that the dark blue is alpha for prediction that has accuracy, the median accuracy on the backbone between the CSM and ground truth reference structures below one onshore where the others are at a level about three entrance. So the big margin of the accuracy is concluded by that sentence in their publication that alpha fold two is approach capable of predicting protein structures to near experimental accuracy. Here in the publication and in my later slides, the terms of accuracy and confidence are kind of interchangeable to use, although statistically there are different terms. So accurate means high confidence and vice versa. To measure the confidence of CSM, the conventional way needs reference structures. There are two ways to do it. And this is actually what Casper is doing. First, you can simply superimpose a CSM to the template, then calculate the either root mean square deviation, also called RMSD, or the template modeling score, TM score. You can also do the superimposition free distance test, such as local distance difference test, LDDT, which I will talk about in the next slide. But what if when there's no reference structure available? So AlphaFold introduced this predicted confidence of PTM, that is a predicted TM score. The PLDDT is a predicted LDDT. And the PAE, which is the predicted distance average for residual pairs. I will focus on the PLDDT because it's the primary per residue confidence measures used in, in the distributed alpha for two models. To understand PLDDT, we must understand LDDT first. The motivation to develop a measure such as LDDT can be illustrated on the, this figure on the right. In this case, the gray structure is a cusp target reference where the cardinal one are the TSMs. As you can see for the conformer A, although the domain structure are quite accurate, you cannot really superpose the CSM upon the target's reference for both domains. So to overcome this problem, all item pairs in reference structures at a distance closer than a threshold define the local distance set L. And the distance is considered preserved in the CSM if it's within a tolerance same as the one in the L. And then for a given tolerance, the fraction of the preserved distance is calculated and LDT is simply the average of the fraction at different thresholds, sorry, different tolerances. In fact, the PLDT is the predicted LDDT C alpha, which means it's on the C alpha carbon only. Therefore, by design, it only reflects the mentioned confidence. And it cannot be considered as an absolute measurement of saturation confirmation accuracy. To pre the prediction of PLDDT is in a structural module in the alpha for the pipeline, a uh, later module. And AlphaFold first construct a large training set between the true of the true LDDT between the AlphaFold CSM and the PDB template where the templates are available. And based on this training set, 
An algorithm is trained and developed and executed to predict PLDD based on the prediction model. I want to emphasize that the PLDD is a predicted confidence. It's not a conventional way of statistical prediction confidence. It's like one more step further, you have a model and you have the prediction confidence based on the model. And then you can you calculate the difference between the, uh, the prediction confidence and ground truth. Then from those to predict the predicted confidence such as the PLDDT. So what the PLDD score is good score? AlphaFold categorize them into four ranges of about 90, between 70 and 90, 50 and 70, and below 50. The overall range is zero to 100. And each color is actually adjacent to the different ranges. And in this case, RNA binding protein NOAA2, each residue is colored based on these uh, four categories. The blue color means very high accuracy, which PLDTD about 90 means the backbone confirmation is accurate. And the saturation rotomers are relatively accurate. And the cyan color region means the backbone is accurate, but saturation confirmation is not as accurate. And for the color of yellow, it means the backbone confirmation is not that accurate, but may hold some truth. And orange basically means do not trust. So if we focus on one domain of this structure and compare it to the PDB ground truth, we can see that for the blue region, the PLDD about 90, the structure is a structure identical to the PDB ground truth. And for the cyan region between 70 and 90, they're similar. And but for the yellow and orange region, the structures between the CSM and PDB ground truth is different. Then what about the domain to man packing? On the left side is again, the overall full length NOVA2 protein based on a PLDDT coloring. On the right side is a 2D array of PAE, predicted line error. It's constructed in a way that the 2D array has both X and Y axis for residues from N to C terminals. And each pixel represents a residue pair XY. And in this plot, the color of the pixel depends on the prediction distance error between the two residues, x, y. And the darker color means smaller error, and light color means bigger error. As you can see from here, this NOVA2 has two domain, three domains, actually. The KG1 and KG2 domain are kind of close to each other, and there's KG3 domain at the C terminal. And from this plot, you can see that within the K1 and K2 domain, and the distance, the distance error is small, which means it, they're accurate. Even between the K1 and K2, K2 domain, in this, for these boxes, the color is still dark, which means the packing between the two domains is accurate, relatively accurate. And also within the K3 domain, it's accurate. However, the packing between four gram of KH2 and KH3, KH2 and KH3 here is light, which means the packing between the two domains cannot be trusted. As you can see the color here, but the loops between the domains are either yellow or orange, which means they are of low accuracy or low confidence. And this feature is not yet in RCSB uh, uh, org, but it will be implemented soon. Now, even though for the domain structure, if the PLDD is low, we still cannot trust it. In this, on this slide, on the right side, it's the PDB ground truth structure that has colors based on the experimental 
support confidence. And blue means they are confident, and cyan means quite confident. As you can see from it, this structure is very well resolved. However, the prediction is something totally different. And we can safely say that the prediction is not right. Zhenghua, you have five minutes. Thank you. The last example, I want to point out that the CSM is a prediction on isolated proteins. But as we know, when we do experiments, we use a protein usually in a cellular contact, which means we rarely handle isolated protein in the cell. And the usual bandwidth is a partner. In this slide on the right side is this fragment bands to its target protein. And the left side is the predicted model based on PRDD color. As you can see, this fragment, this orange fragment, is basically means, as we said, orange means do not trust. And it means it's basically a random coil or a disorder, right? whatever you call it. However, when it bands to the, its, its uh, target, it has a well, well uh, conserved um, loop structure, even with some secondary structure components. So be careful when you use the predictive model in the cellular contact. I want to go briefly to compare the CSM confidence versus PDB structure confidence. And as Alpha Ford claimed, its approach capable of predicting protein structure to near experimental accuracy, which means they are not as good as experimental accuracy. And you can see from here, the typical PDB structure has a precision of about 0 0.2 Armstrong. And then we see from the beginning of our uh, my talk, the alignment error for the alpha for CSM is about one Armstrong. And also the, remember the PDB structure is based on experiments. It's to describe the truth. Well, the CSM has no such property. It's unobserved prediction based on the overall PDB structure and the sequence. We can say that the CSM are comparable to a low resolution PDB structure. And the take home message is use PDB structure at higher resolution whenever possible instead of CSM. At last, I want to summarize what you trust or not in CSM. So as we talked from me and from other speakers, the CSM is quite accurate at the single domain models of conformational rigid protein. And the backbone confirmation can be trusted if the PRDDT is high. However, you have to be careful when you're starting domain domain interactions, as we see from the example, and a complex with binding targets. And if it's conformational dynamics because of uh, either ligand or event induced uh, conformational change. And uh, we know the PLDDT is basically PLDDT C alpha only. So the session confirmation cannot be taken for granted. In fact, even for the best PLDDT category, when PLDDT is about 90, this, the first C beta rotomer is only 80% accurate, which means it was within 40 degree of the correct PDB ground truth. And if you go to C beta, C gamma, the error will get bigger and bigger. I want to emphasize again, the message that if a high resolution PDB structure is available, to use that structure instead of CSMs. And this concludes my talk. We do not recommend using computed structure models that are largely yellow or orange in terms of their prediction confidence, their PLDDT. What we see for many eukaryotic proteins is that they look like beads on a string. You've seen this earlier. In, uh, in, in multiple presentations. The globular portions of the structure that uh, are um, of the computed structure model that are colored blue and, uh, thank you very much, Chenghua, that are colored blue and cyan are trustworthy. But the other segments of the polypeptide chain, those that are color coded uh, yellow and orange, uh, indicating uh, low prediction confidence should not be trusted. Now, there are two ways to look at this. You can be disappointed or frustrated, or you can, uh, as a non-structural biologist, you can seize the opportunity to use an alternative method to try to identify a uh, 
function or functions for those segments of the polypeptide chain that cannot be characterized using X-ray crystallography or one of the other methods supported by the PDB. So that's, um, that's a philosophical answer, but one I think that will stand uh, the, uh, the participants of this workshop in good stead if they, if they keep it in mind going forward. The PLDDT actually is considered a good indicator of um, to indicate internal disorder uh, protein regions. So typically, a low PLD, as you can see here, these regions, these are low PLDDT regions, and they are basically random coil or disorder. But um, I think we there are always, I mean, science is uh, like at the front end, there are always cases that are exception, exceptions. And whether or not those exceptional cases are trustworthy, it depends on it's case by case. So that would be my uh, opinion. Thank you very much, uh, Cheng Hua. It, those of you who are interested in, um, in learning more about these, these uh, the question of discrepancies between the PDB and uh, PLBDT, can look at Cheng Wah's recent paper that appeared in Structure, Xiao et al. It was published online at the end of uh, August. And that, um, that reviews some instances where you had confident structure, or you had well-resolved structures versus uh, uh, low PLDDT scores and vice versa. 